And now to our lab. Ouch! For some amazing body experiments. Oh! Just don't try anything you see here at home. Today, it's your friends and mine, body bacteria. Zand, you stink. I know. I haven't washed in three days. What? But why would you do that? Well, Chris, while you have been washing as normal, I haven't. And that's so I could collect samples of the bacteria on my body. And here they are. All over your body, you have lots of lovely bacteria working hard to keep you healthy. That's right, not all bacteria are bad. In fact, lots of them are good. They do things like eat dead skin cells and destroy bad bacteria, which could otherwise cause you infections. But that's not a reason for never washing, is it, Amazon? Well, that's true, but I've only not washed for three days, and you're about to find out why. Allow me to introduce my body bacteria. Meet the family. There's John, and he's off to see Anita, who's over there. Uh, hello, Anita. What, how do you even know their names? We live together. They actually feed off my sweat, and as they gobble away, they release a nasty stink. So when I don't wash, more sweat equals more nasty smells. Now, speaking of smells... Smell this cheese. Cheesy. What are you doing now? Smell my foot. Oh, it's even more cheesy. Exactly. Now, that's because some of the bacteria that live on your body are exactly the same kind of bacteria that are used to make cheese. Bacteria are a key part of producing cheese and actually give each variety of cheese its unique smell and flavour. Now, in these three jars, we have bacteria on swabs that Zahn's been collecting from different parts of his body. Now, we're going to make three varieties of cheese. One from my toe bacteria, one from my armpit bacteria, and one from my belly button bacteria. And what we want to know is, will the different kinds of cheese smell like the body part they came from? Actually, I'm quite peckish. I'm quite looking forward to this. What's on? You can't eat this cheese. We have no idea what sort of foul bacteria might be lurking in the crevices of your body, and some of them could be dangerous. <sighs> I suppose you're right. Now, don't worry. The bacteria used in the cheese you eat is perfectly safe. Let's get cheese making. And the most important ingredient for my body cheese is my unique body bacteria. Get in there and start making cheese. Because the mix of bacteria on my body is unique to me, my cheese should smell like my body and nobody else's. Like all cheese, Zahn's body cheese takes a while to turn solid. Ta-da! Well, here we have it. Operation Ouch, Zahn brand cheese. Let's see if Chris can guess which part of my body each cheese came from. Now, I'm going to let you in on which one's which, though. Are you ready? Chris can't see what you're reading on the screen right now. Number one, belly button cheese. Number two is armpit cheese. And number three is toe cheese. OK, Chris, let your nose be your guide. Right, number one. Ugh! That's the nastiest cheese I've ever smelled. OK, let's have a go at number two. It's less strong, that. I think that might be belly button. Do you want a little go? Ugh! OK, number three. Ugh! That is horrendous! That was definitely the strongest, which makes me think three is foot, two is belly button, and one is the armpit. Well, Chris, it's the moment of truth. You said number one was armpit. Are you feeling confident? Yes. Oh, number one, Chris, was belly button cheese. How can your belly button smell that bad and so strong? You said number two was belly button. Oh, it's armpits. Finally, you said number three was toe. And for the most powerful, smelliest, footiest cheese, he did get it exactly right. And this is the one you're most confident about. The toe cheese. It was overwhelmingly smelly and smelled exactly like your toes. Well, Chris did get the cheesiest one right, my toe cheese. So, we all have amazing bacteria on our bodies and some of it is similar to the bacteria used to make cheese. But this isn't how real cheese is made. Unlike Zahn's brand, the cheese you buy to eat is perfectly safe. So we really can't eat my cheese then? Not even a tiny bit? No, Zahn, I've told you, no eating. Anyway, it's time to go. Come on. Zahn! Shh. 
Don't tell Chris. I mean, how dangerous can cheese really be? This is going to be delicious. What? It's all gone. Monty! <laughs> I say accident, you say emergency. Accident. Emergency? Accident. Emergency. Accident. Emergency. We got the new case in the emergency department. Word. Over at Sheffield Children's Hospital is 13-year-old Malia and her mum. What's up, Malia? The side of my head feels a bit like jelly, pain, and just, like, dizzy a bit. Ooh, how did your hurting head happen? Play fighting with my little brothers the other day. Malia was at home having a cushion fight with her little brothers Kai and Zach. Well, they'd better watch out, Chris, because in the red corner is Honey the Dog! And she's ready to take on all three of them! Right. Malia, Honey the Dog and her two brothers were rolling around on the sofa. Don't downplay Honey's skills, Chris. She's bossing it. Never mind Honey. In the crossfire, Malia was caught by an accidental elbow to the head. Followed by a pillow punch. Oh, Malia. Was that the okay? She was fine. Malia is seeing stars. Ouch! I think I've got a fracture on my skull. Now that sounds serious. Have you had bad breaks before? I've broken over 100 bones before. Other people's bones might be like a rolling pin. The heart break, my bones are more like spaghetti. Malia's right. Her bones are like dried spaghetti, as they can break very easily. This is because she has brittle bone disease, or osteogenesis imperfecta. When you're born, your bones develop and grow strong when a protein called collagen is made by your body. But if you're like Malia and you don't have enough collagen, then your bones are weaker and can break easily. Here to put Malia through her paces is Dr Simon Scammell. There is some swelling there, and given your history, uh, we probably ought to do a scan of your head, OK? Malia's CT scan will take detailed 3D images of the inside of her head. So if she does have a fracture, the doctor will see it clearly. And the results are in. So this is your skull around, around the outside here, and there's no obvious signs of a break in the bone there at all. So everything looks OK? That's really good. If anything changes at all, just bring her back and we'll happily see her again. OK. I'm hopeful that the, the swelling will settle down and she'll feel a lot better later on with some painkillers. Great news. Now make sure Honey the Cockapoo behaves herself at home. Bye. Bye. Bye.